I'm Bob Duhamel, and today I'm going to talk about calculating the impedance when you have an inductor and a capacitor in parallel. Now you may think that as an electronics technician you'll never need to use this, but if you decide to get a general radio telephone operator's license or the equivalent, which is required to maintain licensed transmitting equipment, you will need to pass a test that very well might have questions like this on there, and who knows, you might find questions like this on a pre-employment exam. So let's go ahead and get started with my favorite example problem. I'm going to start with a sine wave generator operating at 60 hertz. Why 60 hertz? Because I'm in North America, it's just what I'm used to. Math is the same no matter what your frequency is. And we have a capacitor and an inductor in parallel. Let's make the capacitor 100 microfarads and the inductor 100 millihenries. And what we need to do is calculate what the impedance of these two components are working together. So since they're in parallel, we have to use the parallel formula, which for resistors is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now this is the product over sum method. Of course, there's the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals method, which is the one over the total resistance is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3, etc. But this is a little simpler to use and we never need anything else because if we have multiple components, we can just lump them together. For example, if we have two capacitors, we can just calculate them together as a single capacitor and go back to this formula. So we'll go ahead and use that. So what we have to do is substitute our capacitive reactants and our inductive reactants for the resistors here. So that's going to be capacitive reactants times our inductive reactants over our capacitive reactants plus our inductive reactants. And because of the phase angles, we have to use complex numbers. So in previous videos that I have linked in the description below that you really should watch if you haven't seen them about capacitors and inductors and AC circuits, you will see how we lead to rectangular notation. But in a nutshell, what we have is in rectangular notation, let me put up a different circuit here real quickly. So let's say we have this circuit. And I don't need to put any numbers here. I just need to show the formula real quickly. Our impedance is going to be such that if we draw a triangle like this, where our resistance is the base and our inductive reactance is the adjacent, the impedance of the circuit will be that hypotenuse of the triangle. And this can be expressed either as polar notation, where we have the length of the hypotenuse and the phase angle, but rectangular notation just tells us what is the resistance and what is the inductive reactance using a complex number. A complex number would be a real number plus or minus a imaginary number. And so this would be our resistance plus or minus J, tells us that's an imaginary number, times our inductive reactance. Now, if this is regular algebra, that would be expressed as more like this, using a lowercase italic i to represent the imaginary number. But in electronics, we don't do that because a lowercase i represents alternating current. So we use the J in electronics. So it's just a little different if we're used to complex numbers or imaginary numbers in regular algebra. So that describes this triangle basically saying go this distance, which is directly proportional to the resistance, then make a 90 degree turn and go this distance, which is proportional to our inductive reactance, and that describes that triangle. So resistance plus or minus J, J says make a 90 degree turn, plus means turn left, minus means turn right. So if it was capacitive reactants, we would go this way instead, and that would be our capacitive reactants. So our complex number, which is a real number, plus or minus an imaginary number describes that triangle. So we have to do our math with these complex numbers. So let's go ahead and draw our problem on the board again and go through the math. So here we have our problem. I'll just draw it up here small, 60 hertz, capacitor and inductor, 100 microfarads, 100 millihenries. And let's go ahead and calculate this out. First of all, we need to calculate the capacitive reactants and the inductive reactants. 
So let's do inductive reactants first. X sub L equals 2 pi F L. So let's plug in the numbers, get my handy calculator here. So that's going to be 6.28 or 2 pi times our frequency, which is 60 hertz, times 100 millihenries, which is 0.1. So 6.28 times 60 times 0.1 equals, and I got 37.68 ohms of inductive reactants. So our inductive reactants equals 37.68. Now let's calculate our capacitive reactants. Capacitive reactants is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc, which equals 1 over 6.28 times 60 frequency 2 pi times our capacitance, which is 100 microfarads, so that's going to be 0 0.0001. Let's plug in the numbers. 6.28 times 60 times 0 0.0001 equals, take the reciprocal, and I got 26.54. So our capacitive reactants equals 26.54. And I'm going to put a negative right here just to remind us that capacitive reactants is negative compared to inductive reactants when we do the math. So let's get this out of the way and calculate our total impedance. So these are complex numbers, which once again is the resistance plus or minus J times the reactants. So our inductive reactants is going to be zero plus J 30 7.68, and we have to multiply that by our capacitive reactants, which is going to be 0 minus J26.54. And then we have to divide that by 0 plus J37.68 plus 0 minus J26.54. Whew, what a mess. Well, not as messy as it looks because we can simplify this because we don't actually have the real portion of our complex numbers here. We just have the imaginary portions. So let's get rid of these zeros to begin with. Start simplifying this. So we end up with just the imaginary numbers and now we need to know just a few rules for how these multiply together. So rule number one is if you multiply two imaginary numbers your result is a real number. So when we multiply these together, we get a real number as the result. Rule number two is if you multiply two positive imaginary numbers, your result is a negative number. And consequently, if you multiply a positive imaginary number by a negative imaginary number, your result is positive. So let's go ahead and do that math. That's going to be 37.68 times 26.54, 26.54, Got to change the sign because that's a negative number. Hit the equal sign and we get 1,000.0272. Well, that's near as makes no difference. Just 1,000. Now you're going to get a negative 1,000, but remember, if you multiply a positive complex number by a negative complex number, the result is going to be positive. So that negative that you will get, don't forget to take that away. So we multiply those together, we get positive 1,000. Now we have to do the bottom here. So all we have to do is add those together. So that's going to be 37.68 plus 26.54. Don't forget to change the sign there, change sign, make that a negative number equals, and we got 11.14. And this number is bigger than that number, so it came out to be a positive number, so that's going to be positive J 11.14. So our problem becomes 1000 divided by plus J 11.14. So the next rule is if you divide a positive real number by a positive imaginary number, you get a negative imaginary number. So we multiply two imaginary numbers, we get a real number, don't forget to change the sign. And we added two imaginary numbers, we got an imaginary number. So we're going to divide a real number by an imaginary number, we're going to get a 
imaginary number with a flipped sign. So let's take that 1,000 divided by 11.14 equals, and we get 89.76. I'll just put that right here. 89.76. But don't forget, if you divide a positive real number by a positive imaginary number, your result is going to be a negative imaginary number. So that's actually going to be minus J 89.76 or 89.76 ohms of capacitive reactants. So that's pretty complicated and that's the way I see most people doing it, but it's actually a lot easier than that because since we're only working with imaginary numbers, it's almost as straightforward as real numbers. Just don't forget those four rules that I'll reiterate as we go along. So really the problem just becomes a product over some problem. So let's redo this. We have 37.68 times 26.54 over 37.68 plus negative 26.54. And since we're adding a negative number, that's just subtraction. So let's just make that minus 26.54. So now we do the math. That's going to be 37.68 times 26.54. Remember that came out as 1,000.0272. So that's just 1,000. And this is just 37.68 minus 26.54. That's going to end up being 11.14. So we just divide 1,000 by 11.14 and we get 89.76. And don't forget that this is an imaginary number. That's a real number. And when you divide a real number by a positive imaginary number, we get a negative imaginary number. So minus J 89.76. So it's really just a simple product over sum. Just don't forget that this is an imaginary number here so that when we divide the real number by the imaginary number, we get a result that we have to change the sign of. And so there we got 89.76 ohms of capacitive reactants for the circuit. So let's just make a quick review here. First, you have to calculate your inductive reactants and your capacitive reactants. Once you have those, which you should know how to do already, you multiply your inductive reactants times your capacitive reactants, divide that by your inductive reactants plus your capacitive reactants, but that's always going to actually be a negative, so it'll be your inductive reactants minus your capacitive reactants. Then you take the result of that calculation, and if your inductive reactants was bigger, that's a positive number, so that'd be positive J. If your capacitive reactants was bigger, that's going to be a negative number, so that'll be minus J. So our actual impedance should be expressed as, let's go right over here, zero minus J 89.76 is the rectangular notation of our impedance of those. And of course, that means it's 89.76 ohms of capacitive reactants. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.